The Crunch Culture Conundrum by Noodle. Enjoy video. You know, the more I learn about video games, the more I'm amazed they even exist. It is really hard to visualize how a game goes from idea to product. And they usually don't but make the money either. The more I learn about what goes on in the average studio, the more I'm beginning to realize that creating a commercially successful video game, indie or AAA, is a stressful, expensive, time-consuming, exhausting mm -hmm. undertaking. Shit comes at a high price. Not, not just financially. Hello, and I mentally. am Funny Cartoon Man, and today Hello, we will be discussing man. mental health, self-care, workplace abuse, and other fun topics. Oh boy! We get ourselves knee deep in Amazing. Bullshit, I gotta make a thing clear for those who aren't already aware. Crunch and crunch culture are two very different things. Are crunch they? I did. Crunch and crush are different. I didn't know that. Crunch is the act of pushing yourself, usually by working very long hours to meet a deadline. It's right. what immediately follows the oh god, oh fuck moment when you realize an assignment is due in two days oh. and you haven't started yet. Oh, it's a feeling of running on the ADHD moment of, oh shit, I need to do this in like two hours. Five hours okay. of sleep Relatable. in the last two days, going on your third G Fuel, desperately chipping away at an assignment due that morning that you still don't know whether you're going to finish on time. Got that? Okay, cool. Now okay. I want you to hold on to that feeling, but your boss just told you that that's what you and all of your co- Sorry, your family's life is going to be like for the next two months. Oh, shit. Okay, have fun. See you on launch day. That's crunch culture is where most of the problems come from. It's the idea right. that regularly staying late, slaving away on a project among your peers is a good thing. That's a lot of Japanese work culture, by the way, as well. They expect you to stay in and then if you're the first person to leave, it's like considered like disgraceful. Actually, yeah. that should be expected from those in the field. Those who buy into it would argue consciously or subconsciously that it's a rite of passage. It's that not stuff though. Done and it's doing it so well bad. It's just important. It's the most important. All that lame ass work life balance and self mental health yeah. shit can go to hell if it means we're delaying Frogger ancient. Sh I'm pretty sure they do it in China too, but I don't. I think they're trying to stop it. That explains a lot why Japanese games are bangers. I mean, World of Warcraft was also developed under crunch time, but at the same time, if you start doing that constantly, it's really bad. It's really bad for the mentality of, like, your people. Shadow. Well-adjusted people don't usually wake up one day and decide to abandon their social life and also 80% of their sleep. Crunch yeah. is a result of deadlines, a lack of time needed to comfortably reach them, and a general sentiment that it's okay to burn the candle at both ends. No, it's Some not. Some would no. say that this is a bad thing. That's crazy. I yes. Uh, what? What's wrong? Oh, nothing. Okay. Okay. Well, since you asked, I just have all this pubic hair, and I don't know how to get rid of it. Yeah, oh my God! Really Are you kidding me? Know. Introducing Manscaped, no! today's sponsor and the number one reason I can afford food this month. They have sent me another <laughs> it's holiday I knew it. Year box. The all-in-one performance I'm gonna kiss package my dog. kit. Wouldn't you know it that you buy a product and they you can listen to my dog uh, being Look kissed. At all this holiday product. <laughs> Check it out over here. And thanks to Manscaped for sponsoring. Um, is that it? This is a bit personal, but my friend Ed. You don't want to shave your balls and want to have balls, sir. By a car. He suffered some pretty gnarly spleen damage. Oh! He was stuck in the hospital bed for a long while. At one point, they had to use a catheter since he wasn't able to leave his bed. And yo, catheters, holy! Since it was taped to the side of his leg, once they finally removed it, most of his pubic hair came with it. And if he had just used Manscaped, God damn. I'm not. All right, hold on. Let me put the dog down. Oh my gosh! Stop, you little bitch. There you go. Okay, he's off. That wouldn't have Stop happened. Stop barking. For a limited time, when you get the oh performance kit, you also get some stocking stuffers. A travel bag is some little boxer briefs. Look at that. Photoshop a horizontal transform over to Manscaped. I do not relate to. I do not relate to this. I do not need to Manscape my balls. I don't have balls. 
Manscaped. Your Please use Manscaped too? That, that's on the, ah, that is on the screen. What? I do not. So, uh, personally. I prepared a list of words that describe me. You'll notice game developer and... Shit-pilled? What's shit-pilled? Smart are not on this list. So in addition to binging every article and video on Crunch I could find, I've spoken okay. to a few people who work or worked in the industry. That way it seems like I know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. I know some okay. people Research. have always said the, well, we're not holding a gun to your head excuse, but yeah, you are. My employment is in your hands, and if you don't like that I don't want to crunch, you're going to let me go and I'll be out of a job. This is Chris yep. of the Dead. Or, you know, that's his username anyway. I was brought on as the only animator for a season of a show. Oh my god. The only animator? Oh my god, that must be terrible. He Holy. He his experience under the condition that certain details, such as where he worked, remain undisclosed. This is not only because the job market could blacklist him for telling Speaking the truth, out, yeah. Because the company he worked for can also sue him if he directly says bad things about them. That's so fucking stupid. Ugh. Like, why can't you tell the truth about how shitty your job was? I don't get it. In most Whatever. Of these days, this is standard practice. Yeah, when I know it's normal, but it's just it's so stupid. Like, pay attention, and you'll notice the white knight neckbeards rushing to the defense of the multi-million dollar. They getting paid for it. I wish I would get mandatory OT, bro. That these people. You can tell people have never worked a day in their life when they start saying that shit like i love ot i wish i got paid for ot it's like it's not fun you don't have a fucking life man no, company yeah that's it paid overtime paid overtime under polish work laws which are much better than the united states uh -huh. wow, you're, you're telling me these developers are getting paid to work the same hours as an 18th century coal miner wow uh, yes queen give us the bare minimum one of the most popular mm -hmm. arguments used by both morons and PR departments is that nobody really unemployed takes, dude. It's either they work for PR, which granted is like really fucking stupid and suck it because you have to basically be like a lawyer and try to justify uh, bad work practices and defend the company that you work for. Like, I get it. It's like it's like being devil's advocate and shit, but still. How about you don't just don't treat your employees like shit so they don't have to anything to shit talk about? <sighs> it. <laughs> I can I can get on a soapbox about that fucking dumb corporate culture shit, but I well we we are all mature adults. We understand. Uh, someone put in sixty three, forty six, and fifty one on my time sheets last week. Anyone wishing for mandatory OT is dumb. Exactly. People who actually work that shit, they don't like it. But he's got a gun to their head. They chose to work 80 hours a week. They chose to abandon their Yeah, they their chose life. to. This is important because it clearly defines more than a year as a time span of overtime. But as we will underline soon, this happens independent from any requirement. Sometimes there are employees who just stay late at the office or put in those extra hours. With artists and people passionate about their craft, it happens. But I distinctly remember somebody telling me early on, you are not expected to crunch. It is not... Uh, by the way, um, my roommate has mandatory OT, but they pay really well. It's, I, I heard a story, it was obviously anecdotal, but it's like, there was a man who worked overtime and he was really, really rich. He missed out on a lot of, like, spending time with his newborn kid when his wife was sitting at home, like, taking care of them. And he felt, he said something along the lines of, don't quote me, but... I could, if I could take back all that money and give it back to that employee or whatever, my boss, and take the, the time with my son instead, I would take it one million, like, percent. Like, I would not. And that's sad, because it doesn't matter how much money they, they had. They were, like, rich, well off, and they had nannies and everything else. It's like, you're, you're still losing your, your life and your time, even if they pay you well. Even if they give you, like, you know, massages at work and that, but like, you're still at work. That requires. Sucks. It sucks I'm for like, them. Cool. Hey, so like he should. It. Yeah, yeah, I'm just saying that some people think hour that. Days, seven days a week for a month straight. That averages out to 100 hours a week, which is like a cartoon number. I can hardly 100 my hours that, a week. That's like. Dude, I. That's fucking insane, man. My job forces overtime. Sometimes I work 21 days straight, 12, 16 hours a day. Dude, what the frick? 
They're starting to make us sign these two because they can't hire anyone anymore. <gasps> Dude. That's fucked up, man. That makes me so sad to hear, lady. Holy Sweat shit. Sweatshop hours. Yeah, sweatshop you hours. You're thinking to yourself, well, if Chris wasn't forced to crunch, why'd he do it anyway? Simple. Coercion. They need, technically, they need a yeah, job. Chris didn't have to crunch in the same way I don't technically have to obey my house arrest. It was like, yeah, you're not <laughs> technically by contract required to crunch, but they're not going to hire you back if you don't. They're going to let your contract expire, and then that'll be it. Most studios don't technically mandate crunch periods. They don't have to. Over 50% of game devs consider crunch expected by their employers. <laughs> Last year, Epic Games developers described a culture of fear where overtime wasn't mandated, but it was expected. It's like the um the Japanese overtime and leaving first culture. It's not like they have a gun to your head and um what is it called? Like they don't have a gun to your head when you have to do that kind of thing. But because of how in Japanese culture it's like considered rude to like do certain things, it's not expected either. It's just how they shame them socially. They might comment, they might like give you anxiety over like doing that kind of thing it's just so weird that that's kind of like seeping into like other cultures as well do you get full pay for that shit yeah polter but it doesn't matter i'm pretty sure in germany i saw a comparison in germany where they tried to do this kind of thing in a pencil making shop Somewhere in Germany, I think it was, uh, not Innsbruck, that's Austria. I, I don't remember where, but they tried to do this kind of thing in Germany. And they had a full union sit down, said, absolutely fucking not. You're going to pay us these hours. You're going to only make us do these hours. And that culture did not work in Germany. And they had to basically back off of them because they, they unionized and said no. It's really bad. No, my mom is a nurse in Germany. She only gets 50% of a normal pay for overtime. That's still fucked. That's really fucked. She must be, work for a really bad company. But I know in other German companies, also BMW workers, they try, they try to um, increase their overtime to make them work harder and uh, longer hours. And that backfired in Germany, like at the BMW factories where they have the robots and they have to like assemble cars and stuff yeah i i know i know what you're talking about i'm just saying that most co corporate cultures outside of america and other asian countries such as uh, japan and south korea we get two pay sundays and 1.5 general for oat but the requirements for something to be ot are pretty weird yeah that's how they get you huh nurses typically don't have unions in germany so the fuckers they pl employees get away with a lot yeah that's really fucked up if they at least get 100%, you know, yeah, no, I, I just don't think overtime should be a thing or they shouldn't like try to enforce it in that way. Sorry about the tangent. <laughs> An anonymous employee told Polygon that they averaged 70 hours a week and that somewhere between 50 to 100 people were in the same boat. The company gives us Holy unlimited time shit. off, but it's almost impossible to take the time. If I take time off, the workload falls onto other people. And so you feel bad. Another anecdote. That's terrible. I hardly. They put it on social pressure because they feel bad about other people having to. Dude, that is fucked. So if you take a day off, some guy has to suffer because of you, even though it's like you're probably having like a mental fatigue moment, and then you feel bad, and the whole cycle repeats itself. That's so. That's so fucked. I'm grumpy at home. I have no energy to go out. Getting uh -huh. a weekend away from work is a major achievement. Uh -huh. If I take Saturday off, I feel guilty. I'm not being forced to work this way, but if I don't, the job won't get done. Yeah. Hey, don't worry, it gets worse. It's just social At pressure. Epic Games and most of the industry, it's standard practice to hire a core group of employees as well as a larger body of cheaper, less experienced contract workers uh... to do the lower level grunt work. But here's the thing about contract work. In addition to the benefits they probably aren't getting, contractors don't get paid overtime. <laughs> that's how they get away with it yeah okay that makes sense they're on a salary 
meaning that no matter how many hours they worked, their paycheck's going to look the same at the end of the month That's either way. That's so Best fucked. case scenario, when the game finally ships, it gets a 93 on Metacritic, and they get a little bonus. Hell, maybe they even get offered a permanent position. That way, the next time they're abused, do they actually get paid for it? <laughs> yeah, it's like Stockholm Syndrome. That's so bad! In case, the contract runs out. Oh. Hmm. Around the same time this article came out, Jason Schreier broke the story of Anthem's troubled development on Kotaku. God, Anthem and, sucked ass. You know, it's bad enough that we developed a shorthand nickname for workplace abuse, but holy shit, does Bioware take the cake? Because during that game- Does he bling up Blizzard? I wonder. I wonder if they do that. In a seven-year-long development cycle, another term surfaced. Stress casualty. In Bioware, the term refers to somebody who's, quote, had such a mental breakdown from the stress, they're just gone for a few months. <laughs> they had a mental breakdown just so bad that the company said, hey, you need to take a fucking chill pill and leave. Oh my god. <laughs> As Jim Sterling once pointed out, Stress casualty isn't actually a new phrase. It's probably been around for over a hundred years, just not usually in reference to game developers. Mm -hmm. The term actually comes from military documentation describing soldiers with early onset PTSD. PTSD. Yeah. They had lost count of how many times this happened in Bioware. Some come back. Some don't. Some don't. <laughs> This is why I fucking hate when people make the gun to head argument. It's not just wrong, it's actively harmful, and it enables the kind of people who use others' passion against them. It ties into this idea that if you manage to get a job doing what you love, you never work a day in your life, and that the art you create should be reward enough, which is a detached, childish mindset that only makes sense in a fantasy world where passionate people don't also require work-life balance or money to pay rent and eat food. No, no I mean, <clears throat> to not to defend this, but there is a point where some people argue like art, being an artist is suffering, but this is like taking like, this is too fucking far. This is insanity. Having to have mental breakdowns because you want to work more <clears throat> or are forced to work more because of social expectations or whatever. Ooh. It's like, fuck. I gotta assume that the people up top cracking the whip must either not realize Crack or whip. not care that burning the candle at both ends I mean, you are basically a slave you when you don't get paid for overtime. Had. A tired, stressed, underpaid, unhappy mm -hmm. employee working the same hours as a fucking sweatshop worker yep. is not likely to put out their best work. Somehow I doubt that someone undergoing a stress casual- People were so angry and sad all the time. Dude, that reminds me of the Blizzard employees that were talking about the Diablo 4 thing, too. Because I remember there was a guy that went anonymously and talked about the Diablo 4 crunch time as soon as it got closer to, like, a year and they kept delaying the game. They said that people were just so angry and upset all the fucking time. And I'm like, yo, that's, that sounds like a recipe for disaster. Control T feels super motivated. Mm -hmm. Feels weird. Like, obviously the people at Bioware want you to play their game, but the cranking 90s feels a little different knowing that the devs are cranking 90 hours a week. Uh, yeah. I don't know. But people hey, still buy the out. games. <laughs> this huh. is Marty O'Donnell's pet goose. I've stolen him for the video. He's mine now. Hey, hey in there. I think that's my goose. Can you give it back, please? Sh hey, uh, Marty. Yeah, I've uh, been looking for the goose. You uh, have yeah, I'm, I'm just holding on to him no, for a little. It's not your goose. I don't want no, no, to it's okay. It. Don't. It's, it's for the video. Yours. So it's, okay. uh, back at Marty, for those who aren't aware, is the audio director at Highwire Games and previously Bungie. I want my goose back. He wrote the Flintstones uh, vitamins jingle. Julian. He's uh, been in the industry for more than two decades. I talked to uh, you. I want my goose. And he's a big I didn't know fan about of this. weird, convoluted metaphors. Example. In 2014, Martin O'Donnell gave a talk at the annual Nordic Game Conference. He had much to say. But what we're interested in today is his goose metaphor. Marty? Just uh, be nice to the goose. What, why do you want we all know how the fairy tale ends. People get greedy and the goose dies. The goose is the people and the eggs is ah. the games. Obviously, higher-ups don't carve open geese as a hobby, but that doesn't mean that they're treated fairly. People mm -hmm. don't want to actually kill the goose, but they don't seem to have a problem kicking it in the stomach. And a goose that's been kicked in the stomach is not probably going to want to lay any more eggs. Yeah, Everyone metaphorically speaking, yes. I think I think that like in the actual games industry, you're gonna see pretty cohesive sentiments mm -hmm. on it all. But I think that that is 
very contrary to what the community of gamers, uh, how they feel. That's Alex. He's a co-founder and creative director at Stress Level Zero, an indie game studio responsible for VR games Hover Junkers, Duck Season, and Boneworks. He's also cool. a workaholic. We talked about a lot of stuff over the course of the four hour long interview, but something we kept coming back My to dad is, is a workaholic. Of My mom had to like tear him away. He's the kind of person who will only play video games on a Saturday morning and then he goes back to like doing chores or basically like either prepping work and doing like little emails here and there. But my mom told him to like relax and stop doing that so much. So yeah, a game. people are just you workaholics. Really account for everything that could go wrong. Even having the perfect blueprint to follow, there's still so many little gotchas that you don't realize until you're like neck deep in development and mm -hmm. deadlines coming up that turbulence. Game development fucking sucks, man. It does. Say you're making a shooting game and you want to add a cool feature where the reload is different if you emptied a whole clip. There's a good chance you'll be spending more time fixing all the bugs that feature created than you would actually putting the feature in the game. It's yeah. impossible to accurately predict. Which is a problem whenever you have shareholders and consumers breathing down your- Or having 9,000 employees and having to CC like 15 million different people. Yeah, I understand. Like, it's- it sucks. Like, it's just- it is how it is. That's why Z4 sucks. That's why it's gonna take like three seasons to add a jewel- jeweling crafting- not jewel crafting tab, uh, gem tab. On your neck, counting the minutes till launch day. Yeah. An ex-developer at CD Projekt recently described how when asking management last year what their plan was if they couldn't hit the April 2020 deadline, <laughs> their response was that they just had to. There was no plan B. What? Chances are, if you're already neck deep in crunch oh like my some God. of CDPR was, the suits don't care how hard it is or how long it'll take. You keep working till it's done. One night I was so having dinner fucked. with an Activision executive and he said, hey, I've heard about this goose thing. Is this a parody or what? Can you tell me the story about that? And so, you know, I had a couple glasses of wine. I started waxing poetically about the goose and the golden egg. And then he said, well, wow, Marty, that's a really good story. Uh, but, you know, sometimes there's nothing like a good foie gras. Oh. Uh, it's, it's really easy to hear about all of this awful shit and point the finger solely at corporate executives. But I'd be remiss if I didn't also take a moment yeah, to focus on everything Yeah, that's pretty morbid, huh? ...to crunch in the studio, starting with the gamers. The, the, the gaming gamers. community puts more pressure on developers than anyone realizes. Yeah, they do. Especially when they're like, oh my god, my game is delayed. It's like, who gives a fuck? I, I complained about Shadowlands being delayed for like a day, and then I was like, wait, well, the game might be good. Turns out it wasn't. But the joke is, is like, I would rather wait and for the game to be good than for the game to be dog shit. There's, there's so much pressure to like meet That's a just deadline, me, not Some from like executives, that. but from the masses. Like I saw, I saw the like one developer posting death threats that he received on Twitter about it. Yeah, like, I saw that too. It's fucking- Ask for base and human decency after receiving death threats over game delay, dude. Actually so insane. I can't relate. I don't know. Maybe I'm just a person who's worked a day in their life. I don't know. Maybe I'm not a crazy, like, gamer neat. Maybe I'm not 600 pounds. Maybe not balding enough. Scary, mm -hmm. you know? And, like, yeah. we are nobodies and had, like, very few people in comparison wanting our game. But I had people that were, like, livid that I wouldn't give them the time that the game would release. I, I don't know what time on that date that it was insane, man. that the game will go live. And people got Actually violently upset to the point. <laughs> like some indie gamer, dude. I've literally never heard of this studio or these games before, but like the fact that he's getting death threats is insane to me. Or they're like, or like not death threats, but still. How call yourself a game developer if you don't know the exact second that this game is going to be available? Imagine working at CD Projekt, working these insane hours, and on top and then of someone all telling that you to stress, fucking die. Also, yeah. then getting sent death threats from randos on Twitter. I know where you live, bro. Release the game or you're finished. Release Cyberpunk or your family will be persecuted. I will burn you alive if you don't release the game. Jesus Christ. And he said, This is one of the mildest messages some of us got. <laughs> People on the internet are troglodytes? Dude, it's just. That's obscene to me. I don't know. Can't really. The thing is, are these DMs real? Uh, I would assume so. I would assume so. 
I, I don't think a person who works at a company, like a corporate company, would fake this. But, I mean, I could be wrong, but still. And I'm pretty sure it's real because it's, like, it, it doesn't matter what industry you are in. Some people will go crazy over this Twitter stuff. Twitter think you aren't working hard enough. Mm -hmm. There were people out here complaining about how Apex doesn't have as much free content as Fortnite literally a day after an article came out exposing the human cost of that dopamine drip feed. Mm -hmm. Respawn would later state that the whole reason they were updating the game slower was to avoid the crunch that Epic had embraced. There sure. were real humans out here arguing that crunch makes video games realistic and therefore better. And you know, that is such a demented take. Holy. Now, I want to believe that this is a vocal minority, but this head ass take kind of popped off. People pop post this stuff for sympathy clout. Yeah, but like that's real though. Like there have been actual people who have been sued and had the police called on them for threatening like game devs over this kind of stuff. It's not, I'm not saying there's people who don't fake it for sympathy, but there are real cases of people saying this kind of shit. Yeah. Classic X, you know, sitter, <laughs> shitter. Do you know what crunch is? Of course, I support it. Oh my god, man. Wait, I'm not gonna say it. Some kind of cursed blend of entitlement and the lack of very ironic for a Venezuelan to flag so to have that kind of opinion. All the say time. it. <laughs> Like, Jesus Christ. But this insane it's internet insane, noise man. can have a real effect on how games are marketed, how they're made, and the people behind them. Now- I, No, oh, by the way, um, uh, the Halo games thing? Hold on, let me go back to it. How marketed, how they're made, and the people behind- I received loads of death threats this week. Yeah, the, Sean Murray did actually get death threats, and that's not fake. He got death threats over fucking No Man's Sky. Granted, yes, the game was overhyped and it was like buggy and dog shit at the start. That is real. <laughs> he did get death threats. Now, as per the and his team hey, did hey, too. Hey. Yeah. Get out of there. Oh, it's the ghost. As per the contract, I am legally required to discuss Halo in every video I make. So I feel like now's a good time to talk about Halo 2. Possibly okay. one of the most mismanaged games that's ever shipped. Mm -hmm. Its development has been described as intense, brutal, like they were going to die, and more. Thought they were all going to die. What the fuck? <laughs> Wasn't his fault that he, he was pressured to put out a game before it was made properly? Yeah, basically. And, and then it was overhyped as fuck, too. Damn, Halo 2 was great. It's funny because... I don't like the idea of ha people having to suffer to make video games, but at the same time, World of Warcraft was also made under this kind of thing. I remember there was like a dev story of some guys sleeping on floors and eating uh, Thanksgiving, uh, like cold turkey off of a plastic Thanksgiving plate because they had couldn't go back to their families because it was Thanksgiving and they had to work on World of Warcraft before it was like about to get put out. It's, it's like a very common thing. Even in 2004, before like War, uh, Blizzard was even like bought out by Activision, like this was still a thing by games, like game developers. When it was reflecting very common, on what apparently. Like, Luke Timmons, a veteran Bungie dev, said that it it's almost just been around forever. The yeah. Company. The experience was so overwhelming, so damaging, that it forced Bungie staff to think differently about Crunch from then on. Mm -hmm. As Luke put it, there's a crunch you want to do, and there's a crunch you have to do. In my experience in work life, some degree of crunch is inevitable. Uh, whether that is passion-driven or mandatory is the real crux of the problem. When Alex first told me this a year ago, it really bothered me. So mm -hmm. much so that a year later, I felt the need to get Marty's take on it, and... I will agree with that. So let me just say... Wait, that is, oh, I thought he was being a parody. He's actually like talking about this like for real. No game on Earth should ever ship with the Halo 2 crunch. No. Okay? But if you're on a roll, like you're, you're doing something, it's like, yeah, I need to get this out by five. I told everybody it's going to be live five o'clock tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And you're still working on it the day before. And you go, oh my gosh, it'd be so much more fun if I did this other thing. Well, all of a sudden it's 10, 11, 12 o'clock at night and you're still working on it. Well, that's crunch. That's what that is. It's individual creative people saying, 
I can make this better. I still have a little time. I want to get this in under the wire. Now, this is a big mood. Anybody who makes stuff with deadlines will know exactly what Marty's talking yeah. about. Yeah. But even though self-mandated crunch usually comes from a socks on, that's fancy. <laughs> he had a bad mic, so he drew him outside. Yeah, I was like, dude, this this is so funny. Melon won the tournament. Yay! A positive place. That doesn't always mean it's okay. I feel I feel like I've probably been hiding the grippers at the end of my life <laughs> with how hard I've worked at times. Um, mm -hmm. And it's not like nobody else did that to me. You know, like I made the decision to do that mm -hmm. because I felt like I had to for myself. Do you know what I mean? I do, I, but I don't think that's a good thing. Uh, I think that's kind of an invariably bad thing. I don't want to at all compare myself to like an athlete because <laughs> we're fucking not. But <laughs> I think it's a mental athleticism because I know what he's saying because this guy works for like an indie company and he's like his own man kind of thing. But he does it to himself. Maybe it's just like the culture. But, I mean, like you, 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 mm. you have instances like with runners, you know, who will hit this brick wall where they just cannot go anymore and they just have to stop or break through this wall. And I think it's kind of similar. And it's like that's probably unhealthy physically and mentally. Um, I, I, I feel you, but there's a there's a gigantic difference between like a day long marathon and a two month long death march. <laughs> um, <laughs> He's got a point. Day, uh, video Maybe. games are not more important than your health, man. They're not, but running a marathon isn't a life or death thing either. It's a for fun kind of like competitive thing. I, maybe I'm like thinking about it too hard, but yeah. Uh, there's a book about crunches by Jason Schreier. Um, oh, blood, sweat, and uh, <laughs> blood, sweat, and uh, pixels. I think it's called. Yeah, I've had a ten hour ten hour study session. Your head starts throb. Your head starts throbbing at some point. Yeah, exactly. Nothing should take priority above that. I mean, at least not in our industry of entertainment. Like, unless we're talking about unless you're, you're being chased by a killer. Door. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. It's like it's your. It's a first it should fun. not literally be your well-being on the line. Alex was careful to make clear that he would never force anybody, not even his worst enemy, to endure yeah. the kind of crunch that he's put himself through. Uh -huh. Which is a huge relief, seeing as how he's a creative lead. He knows what he's doing is bad for his health. But he does it anyway. That's the same thing that I was arguing about the whole, like, it's it's perpetuating the culture, but maybe people like doing that kind of thing. Because, like, he's doing it to himself. Like, you're arguing against the person. Like, his wife is probably like, honey, you should go to bed. Please don't do this to yourself. And he's like, no, I must make video game. And he starts bashing rocks together, you know? Hi, Huz, what's up? He still feels compelled to do it. He's able Was to it addicted to pain? Hell, Maybe, yeah. Because he's passionate about what he does. So that, that's why it's yeah. called crunch culture. It's literally yeah. a culture of workaholism. Yeah, exactly. why I think exactly. Luke and Marty both make the distinction that even crunch that's entirely voluntary has got to be kept in check. The way Luke put it, It can be awesome because you have passionate people who are excited and have cool stuff to work on, but you got to be careful. People can get so excited that before you know it, they're working a ton and getting Monkey burned out. must make games. That distinction he makes, Monkey. that passionate people are excited, is a really important note to hit on. Because us creatives yeah. tend to be really bad at the whole self-control thing. Yeah. It's so yeah. easy to just throw everything you have into a project you're jazzed about. Before you know it, you're burnt out, you feel like shit, and you hate everything you worked on. Yeah, that is that is the end result. I've had that moment where I drew a, I drew something for like six hours straight, and then I looked at it at the end. And I was like, dude, why the fuck did I waste my fucking time drawing this piece of shit? That's probably the same thing like game devs go through as well. You spent like six hours on something you did, and then you were like looking at it like from a like from a different perspective, and you start hating it because you're so miserable. Some would argue that for management yeah. to explicitly seek out super enthusiastic workers is inherently predatory because young passion is easy to exploit. Oh the yeah, PR bullshit for sure. I hear a lot is like we're looking for somebody who's extremely passionate about this work, and that's like, mm -hmm. oh, okay, you you want to just exploit them? Here's the mm -hmm. thing about that though: in a passion-fueled industry, who doesn't want passionate people? 
Exactly. It's a double-edged sword. You need people who really you know, care well, about the work I mean, they do. Video games the are art, care, so it makes sense. Will be. But unless that drive is kept in check, it quickly becomes self-destructive. You actually start seeing this. You start seeing them. They're staying later and later, and they're like eating. Maybe my death, metaphor wasn't so bad. Death, art is pain. Things. Pain is suffering. And then when if you're in a position suffering is passion. You say, Look, you got to go home. I want you to mm -hmm. go home. I want you to spend the weekend with your kids. Like <laughs> this is <isn't> good. <laughs> the dad's like, no, I must make video games. They're like, no, but your little kids, Jimmy and Susie, need to see you, Dad. It's like, no, I must suffer. You're not, what you're what? doing is not good for you, which means it's not going to be good for us. So yeah. you're not allowed to come in. Sometimes you actually have to say, no, you can't volunteer to crunch anymore. You have to mm. take a break. Yeah. I feel like Luke and Marty are the kind of people you really want to work for. They're more inclined mm. to pet the goose every so often than they are to... Obviously, no! this isn't to say that all management that doesn't think exactly like these two are cartoon villains. But when you embrace that culture of crunch rather than keeping it at bay, that's when you get the horror stories. Naughty Dog is no longer crunches on The Last of Us 2. Wonder how much longer this approach can last. Oh. Jason Schreier put it really well when covering Naughty Dog. The studio is open about crunch culture in interviews, and its managers deliberately seek out perfectionists in art, engineering, and all the other disciplines that make games happen. Hmm. So it is kind of like a double edged sword, huh? Hmm. Yeah. At Naughty Dog, yeah. nobody asks the devs to crunch. Nobody has to ask. ask. They'll be in They'll there. be there anyway. Mm. Obviously, there are things we could be doing better. Maybe it's better planning. Maybe it's unionization. Maybe it's, it's a complete overhaul of existing labor laws. But honestly, I don't know if it's my place to draw those conclusions. Mm. I'm not a game developer. I'm funny cartoon man. Hell, I'm not even well, it's like the thing that Poulter said about his mom being a nurse or whatever, and they don't even pay her uh, full overtime. They give her 50%. It's like, dude, that's so cringe. <laughs> they should be paying her full time for being a fucking nurse, at least. Even if they, they're going to basically, quote unquote, force her to go into overtime. I'm saying that crunch in and of itself is always bad. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, it is most of the time. Studies show that it doesn't really work. But I mean, like, if, if we're going off Marty's definition, there's nothing inherently wrong with it. It's just really easy to take too far but the only thing i know for certain is that crunch culture is definitely for sure a bad thing that no one should be okay with don't forget the fun part if you don't want to do overtime you're hurting the patients yeah it's like the logic of um where, where he brought up earlier here in the video he said if a guy takes a day off because he's literally like gonna collapse and fucking have a mental breakdown that work that he had to do for the whole day gets put on someone else just like the nurses thing like you are hurting the patients and quote unquote hurting someone else in the process i problem child what's up yeah dude like uh it i mean maybe it's just humanity i don't know it's hard to say you know it fucks me up to think about how many people out here are okay with working themselves into the ground forcing others to do it or cheerleading for the companies responsible as long as entertainment is fueled by deadlines and profit the mm. crunch is probably never going to go away entirely. But, you know, hearing about how companies like Respawn and Nintendo are out here actively avoiding it kind of makes me think that maybe... Nintendo delayed Animal Crossing to maintain good work-life balance. Yeah, but then again, they are a Japanese company. I'm kind of sus to that. I'm going to be honest. I'm a little bit suspect to that. Just a little bit. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know about that. Maybe, you know, I'd have to like here, research that. Everyone should be doing that. Oh god! Yeah. There are three oh. things important to making a game. Oh not shit! Dying, he shipping, finally he sounds like he's not in a fishbowl. In that order, and there's a reason why staying alive is first on that list. You know, it might seem obvious. You can't be creative if you're dead, right? But I've seen relationships break up. I've seen people literally go insane because of the pressures. It's just ridiculous. Oh, so stay horrible. alive, stay healthy. Hey, I'm, I'm going to keep the goose. It's not yours. Yeah, it's okay. I'll, Give I'll me my goose back. <laughs> that was cute. I didn't realize he wasn't like a bit. It was actually that Marty guy. It was cute. Uh, Nintendo, despite being a Japanese company, is actually known as one of the best uh, video companies, video game companies to work for. Okay, no, I, I just wasn't aware. I, I'd have to research a bit more about it. I'm just a little bit suspect because, like, naturally, like, Japanese companies kind of 
kill their employees with like you know overtime and all that expectation culture bullshit so i don't know yay clappers good video very informative and well uh formatted yay clappers yay very cute very good video clappers 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 there we go i love the nfs one Suits on my back tent. Woo! The Japanese prof professor at my institute, he would expect his PhD students to work 12 plus hours a day. Yeah, again, that's like cultural. <laughs> Alas, the pursuit of an artist's life is full of pain, but such is life. Yeah. Mommy! Piss, piss, piss. Shit! Piss, 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 piss. Fuck, 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 fuck,